Found some locals here. There's an interesting story here that she saw a a she caught it a rocket with the huge fins coming through these two islands on the morning that MH370 disappeared. And we're having a conversation right now. She identified yes, definitely the blue, the blue, she, which is the bottom line. So she said she could see the blue stripe from under here. So she said, what did she say? It circled, it circled a few times above here. Ping one. Ping two, ping three, four, five, ping six, seven, the seventh arc. I'm Sergio, an engineer from Adelaide in South Australia. I was absolutely bemused by the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370. The mystery was pretty much my spare time hobby. I looked at a lot of different aspects relating to the mystery. You see, there really is only one place on the planet that the aircraft could actually be, and that's in the Maldives. Why? Put simply, because there were actually real people, witnesses, that actually saw the plane airborne over there at towards the end of its flight. Here's a diagram where I'm showing the flight path of MH370 when it was seen coming in from northwest of Kuda Hubadu over here. There were 21 eyewitnesses who all saw and described MH370 fly over. There's Kuda Hivadu, and then it banked right and headed toward the southern tip of the Maldives. Now what I'm also showing on here is after that point, I've drawn here the aircraft circling above Gadifushi Island. Now this was the island that I visited in December 2015 when I went to investigate the submerged aircraft object that I believe is the wreckage of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370. I met a handful of witnesses on this island that also said they saw a plane matching the description of MH370 fly over. The first witness I saw on Gadifushi Island described it as a rocket with big fins. So we're on the island of Uusfushi here having a look for debris and we found some locals here. There's an interesting story here that she saw a a, she called it a rocket with the huge fins coming through these two islands on the morning that MH370 disappeared and we're having a conversation right now like this a rocket with big fins it was definitely before 7 a.m. she said definitely before 7 o'clock in the morning so, and how how high was it how high Okay, it was travelling at low low altitude and there was some fumes or steam because of the coming out the back. Yeah. And how far how far so it's come from the it's come from the northwest across the Tar Atoll through the gap here of uh and Gadafushi and headed how far like a long way out to sea into the Bay Mendu channel? It's so hard that uh, it is not close but it went a little far from me. Wow. Because the sound, mm -hmm. huge, huge noise, yeah. she looks upward and she sees with the huge fumes, 
this boat is coming. Okay. okay. Because she was uh, on the front side of the island, so she can't come. Oh, okay. But because of, of the noise and speed. everything, usually we see the rockets, but we don't hear the noise. I'm not going to go to the boat, so I'm going to go to the boat. I'm going to go to the boat. It's very big. Yeah, you can hear the sound of the bell. She's making a very huge noise. There were three witnesses that also confirmed they saw MH370 circling overhead of Gadifushi Island. Distinctly remember blue on the plane and blue on the tail. We just showed her the Malaysian Airlines picture and she identified, yes, definitely the blue. The blue, the blue she, which is the bottom line, so she said she could see the blue stripe from under here. So she said, what did she say? It circled, it circled a few times above here. Yeah, she said that uh, two or three times it take a round like this. Okay. It's, so it circled as if looking somewhere to land. Did she watch where it went? So it is below the clouds. Yes. Below the clouds, that's why she can uh, yes. I mean, definitely say the colors. That's fine. Did she watch it until it disappeared? Did she watch it where it ended up? Point to where it ended up. So she didn't watch it if it went over there? Yeah, she didn't watch that one. She, the last time she saw was uh, because it takes three times. Oh, uh, okay, in the sky. From the sky, she saw it. So it circled two or three times. Yes. She saw it underneath. Recognised the blue stripe. Exactly. And didn't follow it all the way through. So many people saw that uh, flight, a very large flight. The plane was travelling from this direction to that direction. I was remembering the colours of it. It was dark blue colour and very mm, less red colour. So many people saw that uh, flight. I saw one big flight crossing over my island. I'm on the edge of the tiny island of uh, Kuda, Huvadu, which is a very sparsely inhabited speck in the Maldives chain on the atoll of Dalu. Here, in the early hours of Saturday 8 March last year, a number of villagers saw a low-flying aircraft. It was a large aircraft and it was noisy. And it crossed near the island after the disappearance of flight MH370. You weren't the only person who saw the plane on this island? No, no, so many people saw that uh, flight. After the news of the missing aircraft was filtering back to this Maldives chain, the villagers started to realise that perhaps they had seen something that was very important. The news developed. Their stories are very similar. If they did not see MH370, what was the aircraft with similar markings in the early hours of their holiday, Saturday, March 8, 2014? Kudohdoge gaga nka eka vis mihi ka eplate to fenu nka mabune eki mihi hunna boat fenu ne rohure un tanuge gotung boat to feni favani eki bar kudohdo matim boat to fenu nka mihi nka gotere eka boat to emme reach fenu nka eka ki adi abdul ngahar walgona ahi jihir walgona mitana mere fe erige nka mangiha ka esa fenu walgona hori hotka deng walgona eko lo fenu jama aga fila ham hearing nka boat deng walgona mara bi tuko balang hori deng e reiga walgona maudu mahi mo mele shia boat gelna nka meko walgona sekundi eka ngahi raku Nagai Nuganave Eki Malaysia boat ke ekam aku asih dalam ngasa hamam mihing hari jasa jaha kuda hodu ke mih dekono kanak alu ini nuvas raj pahai kuda doro kari ke zaman fikang alu orang hamam jaging hamam guarantee aku mana hamam raj pahengi dan doro hamam wara dewi aku kuda doro tak hori fen nangis. So this is the view that the eyewitnesses in the Maldives would have had of a low flying aircraft. Windows and doors clearly visible. I know what I saw just now, very clearly. So when Maldives eyewitnesses and 21 of them on the island of Kuda Huvadu are describing a red and blue stripe, it was big, it was wide, it was loud, an aircraft never before seen in their skies, and it matched the description of MH370 on the morning the aircraft vanished, 
This is the plan they saw. Malaysian Airlines ke flight ke photo e dekh mong Abdul Shahid Guni hama yagi no mes ei hama tikahala flight e kama. Here we have two sets of eyewitnesses that all saw MH370 along the same flight path. The witnesses here saw the plane at around 6:15 typically, and the witnesses in Gadifushi Island confirmed they saw the plane. It was before, definitely before seven o'clock. So I guess an estimate. They most likely saw it around, definitely after Kudahuadu and potentially at 01.20.25 UTC. 6.20, 6.25 local time. So the Maldives eyewitness sightings, this was the most important clue as to where MH370 had ended up on the morning it vanished. Multiple eyewitness accounts of this aircraft approaching the island of Kudahuadu from the northwest. They know they saw flight MH370. Those sightings put this aircraft at an exact location on the planet, at an exact moment in time, and at a crucial time towards the end of its flight, of where this plane ended up after being missing for almost seven or so hours. So where did MH370 go after it circled above Gadifushi Island? Two really important things when the witnesses are saying they saw the aircraft circling above. Number one, humans are still in control of the cockpit. And number two, most importantly, circling indicates that they are now looking for somewhere to land this plane. Somewhere to have the one shot at trying to land this crippled plane. So after circling above Gadifushi Island, all they could do was attempt an emergency landing in the Maldives atolls. You see, from the air, the reef flat of an atoll. It looks like a pad where you can try and land an aircraft on. The round edge rim of an atoll looks like a runway. So you can easily understand how, from a pilot's perspective, there's essentially a makeshift runway here to attempt a landing. You've got some shallow water, You've got some hard rock underneath. So it was probably the only thing the MH370 pilots had by way of a landing strip under the circumstances. Now I've been to the region and I can tell you there is absolutely nothing around for kilometres. But the problem is, on the atoll, it's like landing on the top of an underwater volcano. And there's absolutely no way of knowing exactly how the aircraft is going to stop. So here's my scenario. The pilots came in to land along the atoll, flaps down, flap along down, and they come in and they touch down in the water. You remember the, the trailing edge of the flap on and the Tanzanian flap is all scraped away. Well, to me, you would get that as a result of landing on the, the hard coral reef surface of the Maldives Atoll as the plane landed and scraped after sinking from the water. From that day, the swirling currents of the Indian Ocean produced firstly some strange appearing aircraft debris that landed on some Maldives islands, as you would expect being in proximity to the crash site, and then, then later months, debris would start appearing in 2016 on the eastern coast of Africa at the Mozambique Channel where a lot of the debris of MH370 or suspected aircraft debris has been collected. Also the Reunion Island Flaperon. All these pieces of the MH370 puzzle connect together in time order sequence and in space and it gives us a path of flight MH370 on the morning that it vanished and where it ultimately ended up.